The year is 2026. Everton Football Club have been relegated from the Premier League for the first time in their history. Their new chairman has hired a new director of football to take them back to the Premier League at the first time of asking. Who is this new director of football? Hello there. Greetings, my excellent friends, and welcome to Club 3, Part 1 of the Director of Moneyball. I'm Kirk Sheridan, and this is the start of the biggest challenge of the series so far. If you're new around here, I've had a four-year career as Director of Football, two years with Worthing, two with Birmingham. The whole series is available for you to watch in the Director of Moneyball playlist, so do go and check it out. It's been a completely wild ride, but if you just want to watch the Everton portion, well, it's going to be utterly crazy. I have now been given the task of saving Everton Football Club. This is a club with an illustrious history. Champions of the English top division no less than nine times. They've tasted European success with the Cup Winners' Cup. Five times FA Cup winners. But now they find themselves in the championship. But this is a club with enormous potential. They've moved to their new stadium. Nearly 53,000 people can come and watch Everton Football Club play. They've got superb training facilities, excellent youth facilities, excellent youth recruitment. And most excitingly for the director of football, a transfer budget of nearly £50 million in the championship. But after relegation, I have a sneaky suspicion a lot of this squad will want to move on. So it's just as well the new board are expecting me to sign players under the age of 23 for the first team. This is something I've prided myself on throughout the save so far, and it will no doubt serve us well. So let's get as many people as possible joining us on this next stage of the Director of Moneyball adventure. Drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, tell your friends. It's going to be great fun. You know it, I know it. Bring them along. The supporters, just like the board, are expecting us to bounce back straight away. Automatic promotion. And the fans want to see us entertain them along the way. So that's something I'm going to be keeping a very close eye on with my assistant manager choice. So for those of you who are looking to play a director of football save yourself, the first thing you need to do is set all of the staff responsibilities accordingly. Make sure you delegate anything to do with team selection to your staff. But take full control of hiring and firing the staff. Under 21s, under 18s, who gets to undertake training courses, that's all in your remit as director of football. Transfers and contracts, this is your bag, so keep all that as it is. But when have you ever seen a director of football talking to the media after a match? Delegate all of that out along with the training because you want your head coach taking full control of that side of things. Same goes for match tactics and match day decision making. And once you've got all that set, you're good to go. No training, no match tactics, no team selection, no motivating the players. That is the remit of your head coach. You are there to give them the very best playing squad you possibly can. But before we look at that playing squad, we need to look at the single most important person when playing as a director of football, your assistant manager. And we don't have one. We also don't have a head of youth development and we're missing three coaches, so it does look like the entire backroom team got booted after relegation. So I need to find an exceptional assistant manager who can essentially step in and act as a team manager in any other save. And to do that, I recommend a view like this. On the staff search screen, you need to see your potential manager's tactical style, their preferred formation, their playing mentality, their playing style, and you need to see all of the attributes that dictate whether they're a good manager, not assistant manager. So I've filtered this list down to the best candidates I can find. And to help me make this decision, I'll refer back to our supporters' expectations. They want entertaining football. So Catanaccio and controlling possession, probably not the most exciting things to watch. So it's down to Marcus Crocher, Anthony Clark, and Lovett Floor. So Crocher has the higher reputation out of all three. But my word, compare him with Anthony Clark, and Clark's attributes are off the charts. 
So we'll forget Croatia. Let's compare Clark with Floor. Well, I think we have found our assistant manager. And there we have it, a contract is on the table. Almost £4,000 a week, a three-year contract. So I now have to get the rest of the back room ready for his arrival. If we want Anthony Clark to train and develop this team properly, we need to give him a helping hand by setting his primary tactic for him to base all of his training off. So we know he wants to play Gegenpress. We also know he wants to play 4-3-3 and that's it. Now, when he joins, he will make sure that he's training players in these positions. He'll make sure that his sessions are based around developing this particular style of play. But I was right. I think a few of these players are not going to be around to see Clark take charge of his first match in the championship. Seven players who either want to leave because we've been relegated, want to move to a bigger club or are just generally unsettled. But you know what? Looking at this squad, I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. We have 13 first team players aged 30 or more. And the vast majority of those unsettled players are in this mix. Iwobi. Raul de Tomas, Yerry Mina, Jordan Pickford, Decore, Idrissa Gay. I honestly see no problem with these people moving on because we're not just playing as director of football here. We're playing director of Moneyball. So there are rules that I need to follow. I'll come on to them all later, but one to bear in mind right now is we're looking to sign players aged 20 to 25. This lot, we will be looking to move on pretty quickly. And it really doesn't take long to work out how and why Everton managed to get themselves into this state. They've actually done a decent job over the last few years, as you can see, of making a good net profit on their transfers. But look at the ages of their major signings. Vestergaard, now 33, so he was 30 years old when he joined them. Caprari, now 32, so he was 29 when he joined for £13 million. Traore was 28 when he joined from Villa. And most shockingly of all, this year, Seferovic, De Tomas, Target and Trippier, all 30 plus at the time they signed. So yes, they've been making money, but the board and Frank Lampard's team were not future-proofing this squad. And oh my goodness me, you can see why they've been needing to make that net transfer profit. At one point in 2024, this club was £70 million in the red. Now we've had an exceptional year for transfer sales, so we're currently up to £107 million, but I'm only getting 50% transfer revenue retained. So what state are these finances really in? Okay, well, considering we're starting with 100 million quid in the bank, that is not a good projection. £230 million overdrawn in three years' time? Oh, you are kidding me. So at Birmingham Football Club, we had £85 million worth of debt and we were paying back almost £500,000 a month. I've just joined Everton Football Club who have nearly £400 million of debt and are paying four million pounds every single month to the bank why do i make these choices why why maybe next time i'll just find a nice easy sensible club maybe so you know what that really explains why i'm being thrown all of this money this year that transfer budget that wage budget it is all about getting back into the premier league immediately because if we don't there is a distinct possibility this club will sink into destruction okay must get promoted this year that's an easy enough task to remember we are media favorites for promotion and wow we've got five players in the media dream 11 brilliant um although having said that williams mina iwobi mcneil tom yeah they're all ones who want to leave i just have to move some of them on though look at the wages of some of these players. Mina's on £90,000 a week. His contract expires at the end of this season. Pickford, 83000 contract expires at the end of this season. De Tomas, 68000 expires end of this season. If I keep these players around to help us get promoted, there is just no guarantee, A, that we'll get promoted because they've already taken us down last year. And secondly, we risk losing them all for nothing. So I have to cash in and I'm going to make it really simple. Everyone in this squad who is age 31 or higher, we're offering them straight out for transfer. I have no idea who's going to come in for them. Their wages might well put a lot of clubs off, but we need younger, hungrier players to come in and take us back to the Premier League. 
Well, I shouldn't have worried. 29 transfer offers in now. Three offers for Idrissa Gay. You know what? I'm going to try and bump this one up a little bit to 1.3 million. Excellent. I've accepted that. And we'll accept the other two to make sure he's got a choice of destination. To Thomas, though. Stoke are only offering 15.5 million. I know he's only got a year left on his contract, but his value is almost 25. So let's put it up to 20. Oh, and they've pulled out. Great. Um... Let's try that again. Yerry Mina, Nottingham Forest, offering nearly £7 million. That's not far off his current value. And he's our highest paid player by a mile. So, yep, yeah, we'll, we'll accept that. Pickford, what do we have here? Right. Sampdoria, £5.5 million, including instalments. So, we'll absolutely accept that and let other clubs know that's what's expected. Caprari, we've got Olympiacos offering £10 million. That's what Sampdoria will have to pay as well, then. Tarkovsky, whose value has just completely crashed. Looks like the best we're going to get is just over half a million. So we'll see who else is happy to offer that level. Vestergaard, it looks like AEK, Athens and Panathinaikos offering similar amounts. So we'll expect everyone else to do the same. And then finally, Seferovic. It's got to be the Olympiakos offer again. Well, that's a good start to summer business. That's six potentially outgoing 30-something players. The ball is now very firmly in their court. We have another offer for De Tomas. Let's try and get this up a bit higher, but not as far as 20. What about 17 and a half? Yes. Excellent. We shall accept that. And I'm also starting to look at incoming business. James McAtee, we're bringing in on trial. My scouts are saying he is a leading championship player and a good Premier Division player in future. So not at the level of the Tomas now, but can be better in future. And that is exactly what we need in the Moneyball world. So throughout this series, at Worthing, at Birmingham, and now at Everton, I've been applying nine rules of Moneyball to guide how I act as director of football. The first is incredibly straightforward and one of the hardest to do. Prioritise your youth team ahead of bringing in transfers. Looking at Everton's development centre, we've immediately got a very high potential first team prospect. So we're going to move Robert Parry straight into the senior squad and try to ensure that our new assistant manager gives him game time throughout the year. Secondly, only by players aged 20 to 25 who you can see have played a decent amount of football. I've said it before in a previous video, wonder kids are overrated. They take too long to develop and when you're playing as a true director of Moneyball, you need first team ready players to step in. So that means three star current ability and room to grow as an absolute minimum. Third, make sure you're finding players below market value. One of the easiest ways to do that, look at ones who were transfer listed. Rule four, improve defence before attack. Quite straightforward. Clean sheets are worth more points over a season than goals. That's not to say we'll play boring football, but that does mean we need to strengthen our back line before we go anywhere near buying a striker. And linked to that, rule five, always improve the weakest area of your team first. Given how many 30-somethings we've currently got in our defence, I think we're focused on the right areas. Rule six, don't buy strikers unless you absolutely have to because they cost too much money. But unfortunately, looking at this squad depth screen and seeing the number of strikers we might be moving on, we might need to add one to our shopping list. Rule seven, sell players at their peak age before they start declining in value. Moneyball is all about making a profit on the transfers that you bring in. That's what we absolutely need at Everton. And that's why we're trying to get rid of as many of these 30-somethings as possible before their contracts run out and they end up leaving for nothing. Rule eight is always be scouting for replacements because you never know when you'll be forced to sell one of your star players. Make sure you've got an ongoing recruitment focus all the time. And rule nine, with a focus firmly on maximizing the value of your players, if somebody comes in and offers you above their market value, you have to sell. Doesn't matter how much I like Brandon Williams or Dwight McNeil. If somebody comes in and offers 40 million quid for them, they are gone. And I must say, I feel I am at the perfect club to implement these Moneyball rules. Because quite clearly, the strategy that Everton have been applying up to this point has not been working. We need a coherent recruitment approach. We also need a coherent approach to transfer sales. That's what you're going to get from me as director of Moneyball. Right, it is the 2nd of July. We finally made it to our second day in the job at Everton. And in the confusion, we've got clubs trying to poach our youngsters. Matthew Rothwell could be a quality player for us in future. And Brentford are trying to get away with an offer of less than £700,000 in total. No. 
Same goes for Beaumont Clark. I need time to actually assess the quality of my youth players. Until I've done that, they're all staying. But Valencia are in with an excellent offer for De Thomas, so we'll accept that. And more good offers for Vestergaard. Good, good. And later the same day, it's time to go and meet the players. Now, given we don't have an assistant manager currently to act as our head coach, I need to step in. And to be fair, this is something that I will have to do every year. It's only twice that I stand in front of the team, once at the beginning of the season and once at the end. I'm going to commit to these Moneyball rules in front of them. We will be giving youth a chance. Great to see that they are pleased with that as well. Excellent stuff. And they want to go up as champions too. Good stuff. The next day, though, some not so good news. We've lost our under-18s assistant manager to Brighton. He's joined them as their under-18s manager. So we absolutely do need staff across both our under-21s and under-18s. But I kind of want to wait for Clark to come in first as assistant manager. One thing I have done, though, is offer a coach contract to David Wright, who's currently at Hull City, because he's great at working with youngsters. He can motivate people. He's also determined. I mean, he could cover a lot of roles in our coaching setup. Well, he heard me talking about him. David Wright has decided to join Burnley. Potentially, in a sign of things to come, he feels Burnley have a far stronger reputation in the game than we do. Given our illustrious history, I'm not so sure about that. But Burnley are currently in the Premier League. So it is all down to the new boss man to get us back there. Anthony Clark has accepted his contract offer. He is here, our new assistant manager. Head coach the main man and anthony clark is wasting no time he's getting his pre-season training and he's making sure we're setting up some team bonding as well he wants this team to gel he wants to galvanize them as a unit as a collective and that is exactly what i was hoping to see and now we have our first sale Gianluca Caprari, for a fee of 8.25 million pounds is moving to olympiacos could go as high as 10 and a quarter million but it's a loss because we signed him for 11. That said, he's in the last year of his contract, so actually recouping most of his fee, I think, is a pretty good deal. And they're all running out the door. Jordan Pickford now has moved to Sampdoria, could rise to six and a half million pounds in total, and Idrissa Gay going to Young Boys for one and a half million quid, which I think for a 36-year-old is a quite remarkable piece of business. Yeah, we really are making significant cuts to this Everton squad. Vestergaard has departed for Espanyol for a fee of potentially four million pounds. AEK Athens have signed James Tarkovsky, and Harris Seferovic is about to join Olympiakos. There we go, that deal is done. So that's over £20 million from the sale of six players, and the youngest of those was 32. That is a proper squad refresh, isn't it? We've now got nearly £57 million available to spend, and over £1 million a week in wages. We're definitely going to have some options. But worryingly, those sales have bumped our odds down. We're now second favourites for promotion behind Fulham. So that is definitely something I'm going to need to keep an eye on. Now, Aston Villa have signed De Thomas. This one could go up to 19.5 million, but he cost us 28 million just last year. That's a terrible piece of business from Everton to pay that much for a 30 year old. We're now down to third favourites because of that sale as well. But I can't just pick the team who took Everton down last year. I've done my due diligence. Some of them were pretty shocking. So we might on paper be weakening the quality of the squad, but I wonder how does Anthony Clark, our team manager, stack up against some of the competition? Fulham are currently managed by Will Still. Interesting. So they're favourites to go up currently under his leadership. But you know what? Anthony Clark is better than him in quite a few areas certainly higher determination he's a better judge of player ability and potential much higher level of discipline yes he's lacking in the tactical knowledge but i think that would be an even scrap in the dugout and who's in charge of bournemouth currently robbie nielsen okay well i think it's fairly clear there who's got the better head coach and what about norwich one of the other favorites steve bruce well, I'm sorry, Brucey, it looks like you're on the way down while Anthony Clark, our main man, is absolutely on the way up. So, yes, Anthony Clark, quite possibly the best manager in the championship. Now, I really need to get him a decent squad of players. Well, in his first game in charge of Everton, Anthony Clark's team were a huge success. We played a friendly in our training camp against BJ Youth and we beat them 4-0. 
38 shots, 63% possession, didn't give them a single chance. That is an encouraging start. My money ball commitment is now being tested, my friends. Hoffenheim have offered £15 million for Brandon Williams, and I have had to turn it down. He's 25 years old, he's not yet at his peak, and he's currently valued up to £25 million. So there's no way I'm letting him go for less than 20. He's not happy about it though, he's one of the players who wants to leave due to us getting relegated last season. I would like to keep Iwobi, McNeil and Williams, but I'm going to have to see how this situation develops. And the clear out continues, Yeri Mina has signed for Atletico Madrid. So that's 10 players out to the tune of £44.5 million, and we still haven't brought in a single new player. Who's panicking? I'm not panicking. Are you panicking? Well, frustratingly, we lost out on what I thought would be our first signing. James McAtee, who we offered a contract to, we offered £35,000 a week. He's gone to Sheffield United because they've offered him over 40k. Oh, so frustrating. But all is not lost because we are signing an absolute championship manager legend. Michael Duff. Yes, Michael Duff from Cheltenham off of Championship Manager. He's joining us as a coach, and if he can develop this squad to anywhere near the level that he reached back in the day, is not, not real life, but, you know, on the game. Oh, we're in for a treat. And finally, it's the 23rd of July, but we have signed the first new player of the Sheridan era at Everton Football Club. Sivert Mansverk has joined us from Juventus. He never really broke into the first team, never started for them in the league from what I can see. But when he was playing with their under 23s, he's putting in some pretty tasty performances. So this guy is a leading championship player right now. He's going to be a good Premier Division player in the future if we develop him properly. He's 24 and he's now valued between 10.5 and 14.5 million pounds, which is pretty good when we paid four. Money ball at work, my friends. Money ball at work. Also worth noting, we're paying him £26,000 a week, which is about a third of what De Cure is currently earning, who is no better than Mansverk right now and only going to get worse. And another sale, this time 30-year-old Jean-Philippe Gabamin has moved to Sevilla for £4.9 million. We could get another £1.1 if he plays 50 games for the club, but he is 30, I'm not banking on that. And that takes us to just short of £50 million worth of sales. And I've only been in the job about three weeks. Talk about making you mark. We still only have the one new player. That is cause for concern. We are third favourites and our odds are lengthening. And of course, the board require me to get automatic promotion back to the Premier League this year. So you might expect me to feel a little nervous at this stage. Fear not, because I have been busy. We have seven potential transfers lined up, all Moneyball signings ready to step into the first team now and improve in future. And as seen earlier, we have the best manager in the division. In Anthony Clark, we trust, my friends. So join me in the next episode to find out how many of these money ballers we can bring in and to watch Anthony Clark take charge of Everton's first ever match in the Skybet Championship. I hope you've enjoyed what you've watched today. If you have, please drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, turn your notifications on to find out the second the next part drops. You do not want to miss it. But in the meantime, be excellent to each other. I'm Kirk Sheridan. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you soon.